Okay, fam, another late night video. Uh, this is something that I think is one of the cooler parts of Meta Sounds that's only going to get better, and that is the uh, spatialization interface. So there's lots of data that we can get from the the uh, spatialization parameters, and being able to push the that data into uh, a Meta Sound and then be able to act on it is really really cool. So check this out. So here I have this helicopter sound. This is a helicopter I recorded um, back when I lived in LA. LA. It's a cool sound. So I've got it here on this um, sphere. And uh, you can see uh, I go far away. It gets quieter. Um, you can hear it spatialized. Pretty cool. And You'll also notice that um, if I look down, you hear a, a, a slight EQ curve get applied. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? So check this out. Okay. This is really cool. There, okay. First of all, <laughs> just just to just you know full disclosure, there is no attenuation on this sound. <laughs> all right, it is a two D sound. Okay, it's a two dimensional sound. I'm not I'm not attenuating. I don't have any spatialization settings on it. This is all done inside Meta Sounds. So here I'm playing my loop, and then, and remember, uh, you can you can get your interface. You go to the MetaSound, and there's all the interfaces you can um, add, uh, implement on your MetaSound. And so I have attenuation and a spatialization, and attenuation gives me the distance value. So I get I get how many uh, how far away the sound is in in U units, and then I get some angle values based off of the azimuth, which is the horizontal, you know, degrees, and then the elevation, which is the alti altitude, uh, altitude degrees, right? Altitudinal degrees. Um, and uh, <laughs> so here you can see I'm, I'm just doing a simple linear map uh, so that when I'm a 3,500 units away, which is about the size of this map, um, it starts to drop to zero. Right, I think in the corner of the map it's like thirty-two hundred. So, and then, um, <clears throat> and then you can see here, I'm applying a parametric EQ at fifteen hundred um, hertz uh, with a band uh, quality of about two, and uh, I'm basically mapping negative ninety degrees, which is like when it's when the source is like underneath the camera to 90 degrees when it's directly above the camera um, to act as a, a gain, either a dip or bump in that frequency range, right? And then this is the cool part. <laughs> I'm taking the azimuth. It was a little more complicated than I thought it was going to be right off the bat. Um, but that's just because of our panner, because I used our stereo panner. And uh, this is basically the panning algorithm. And all I'm doing here is I'm just because um, uh, this spits out uh, neg uh, this spits out uh, 180 degrees to negative 180 degrees, and zero is the forward. So what I ended up doing is I split it out into three parts um, because I need because the stereo panner needed. Um, one to negative one. So you can see here it says negative one is full left, one is full right. And so I had to convert these degrees into um, basically uh, qu four quadrants where the, uh, the values would sort of cycle around because I needed, I needed, um, because, because uh, 180 degrees would be centered again, right? 
90 degrees is, is uh, you know, right, and then ni- negative 90 is left, and so then 180 uh, would be right behind you, right? So these had to be inverted uh, when they went from 0 to 1 or 0 to negative 1, whereas this was uh, normalized. And so then I just used a little crossfader split into four quadrants uh, because this took uh, this took the top quarter, which was um, the 180 degrees to 90 degrees uh, segment of the uh, degree of the of the azimuth output. This took the 90 degrees to the negative 90 degrees, and this took the negative 90 degrees to negative 180 degrees. So. If you were to make that a full, even circle, this would be a quarter, this would be half, and this would be a quarter. So that's why I have this set up like this. One pin, and then two in pin inputs, and then and then a, um, the last one input. And so then I just have this uh, cross-fading between one, two, three. And it's okay if these values overlap. Um, you know, I could... Uh, um, you know, there might be some, you know, the, the overlap might be a little bit wonky because of the clamping, but um, g- generally it's fine. It works. You could hear it. And then it spits it out the some pan amount, and then that goes to the output left, the output right. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so, so, okay. What, you know. Obviously, I don't have to do this work. I could just have applied spatialization settings. But this is where you open up your brainstem because you're like, whoa, when you realize what you're looking at here is that you have access to not just distance, but the altitude and the azimuth. And you could change how the sound is designed based on, you know, is it to the left of the player, is it to the right of the player, is it in front of the player, is it behind the player, is it above the player, below the player, far away, close by. And it doesn't just have to be applying stuff like filters and, you know, attenuation values. It could be like blending to new sounds. It could be, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, and, you know, this is one of those things where, um, you know, a lot of people uh there's there are definitely people who want to have some spatialization and some non-spatialized sounds blended together well this is a great you know i can just bypass the stereo panner and then have some sort of crossfade value or something like that and it would have that you know so this is you know this is basically putting the power into your hands um, and that's why I think it's just it's just like one of the coolest parts about meta sounds, and I can't wait to see, you know, the future of meta sounds and what other interfaces we can implement. So I'm I'm excited. I thought this would be fun to share. Um, yeah. So thanks for checking checking this uh, video out. Cheers. <laughs>